Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Mr. Cole. Um, this is an optional lecture, so there are no questions at the end. Uh, this lecture is designed to help you uh, review for the test, or if you missed in class, um, this is what we're going over for the day. Uh, so today, we're going to talk about uh, President Woodrow Wilson, uh, one of our more famous presidents. He served as president from 1913 to 1921. Now, we learned yesterday that Woodrow Wilson uh, won the presidency because William Howard Taft and Teddy Roosevelt broke up and split apart the Republican Party. So since they split apart, the votes also split between them. And so he won as a Democrat. So when he wins into office, um, he was also considered a progressive president. So he plans to attack three big things to make our country better. Number one, the trusts. Number two, the tariffs. And number three, big finance. Okay. So how does he do that? He calls this whole plan the new freedom. The reason he says this is he says that uh, within our country, uh, freedom is no longer just everybody sit around and let us um, just let anybody do what they want. Freedom is being protected from these three big areas of privilege, these three big problems within our country. So let's look at the, each one. Number one, eight, the trusts. Uh, Woodrow Wilson strengthens the um, precedent set by Teddy Roosevelt and by William Howard Taft in terms of taking down trusts. Trust, as we know, is another name for a monopoly. What he passes with Congress is the Clayton Antitrust Act of 1914. What this did is it strengthened the already Sherman Antitrust Act uh, and made it more easy to implement. Basically, what Clayton did is it allowed for... Um, the government to shut down companies from buying the stock of other companies in order to try and form a monopoly that way. Um, so it prevents us from doing that. Also very important, it specifies that labor unions are not trusts and that they would be allowed to strike. Before this, the Sherman Antitrust Act was actually used against the labor unions, saying that they were forming uh, like a trust of workers, of laborers. Well, now Clayton Antitrust comes and says no. Strikers are allowed to fight for their wages, and they're allowed to go on strike. They also, uh, under Wilson, passed the Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Trade Commission is still in use today. What this agency is, is a, it's a national government agency that's a watchdog. It investigates uh, unfair business practices and will file lawsuits or take to court or issue fines to companies that are um, doing business practices that are unfair to consumers. Right? They are the ones who go out and investigate these business practices. He also changes our tax system, which favored the rich. Um, before he changes taxes, he changes these, thing, these things called tariffs. What tariffs are are taxes on imported goods, so goods that are coming into our country. At the time, they had very high tariffs. This protects big United States businesses because there's no foreign competition. The foreign companies are able to have to charge more than the local companies do. So the big businesses like this. Well, since the big businesses like this, uh, Wilson cuts the tariffs for the first time uh, in decades. And by cutting the tariff, um, he opens up the United States market to foreign countries, which brings the prices of goods down. No longer did the monopolies have single control over the whole country. In order to replace that money that they were losing from tariffs, the Congress and the country uh, pass an amendment, the 16th Amendment, which establishes a federal income tax. What this meant is that people were taxed um, at, on, based on how much money they made. Before, there was no income tax. The only taxes were on uh, actual goods that you bought, like a sales tax. Well, now there's taxes on your income and the amount of money you make. Right? Now, they decided to set up a progressive tax rate, which means that the rich pay a higher tax rate than the poor. All right? So if the person making $10,000 only has to pay 10% tax rate, whereas the person making $500,000 has to pay like a 35% tax rate. All right, so this, again, trying to limit some of the power of these wealthy citizens, these wealthy businesses in our country. He also begins regulating the financial side of our country, the banks. And he does this through an act called the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. 
The Federal Reserve was designed to regulate the banking system. It divides the country into 12 different districts with a central bank in each region. Now, very importantly, what the Fed does is it controls the amount of money that is in the market. So we're talking, you know, actual the amount of, uh, of, of physical cash of United States dollars that are out in the market. They control the value of the U.S. bill. All right, so sometimes they'll decide to pull money out of the market. Sometimes they'll decide to put more money in. And this has an effect on our economy. They also are there to prevent banks from closing. When a bank closes, um, people lose uh, their money and people the economy goes really badly. So the Fed is there to be a central bank where member banks like Fifth Third Bank or PNC, they can borrow and trade with the Federal Reserve Bank in order to uh, grow as a company and stay afloat. So it's basically it serves two roles, the Federal Reserve. One, it's trying to grow the economy. And two, it's trying to make sure that our banking system and our money supply remains stable, that we're not just jumping all over the place, going crazy with the banking world. Right? The Federal Reserve is actually still around today um, and is is very, very, very important agency of our country. Um, so important, in fact, that they actually serve longer terms than our presidents serve. Um, so they are very active in our country in terms of regulating money and regulating the banks. All right, lastly, women's suffrage. Um, during this time period, uh, right around Woodrow Wilson's presidency in 1920, the 19th Amendment is passed, allowing women the right to vote. All right, last slide. Um, Progressivism. This is going to finish up our whole unit on the progressives. So what were some limits to progressives? Well, we've seen which each president, Roosevelt, Taft, now uh, Wilson, that the progressives do not really extend their support to African Americans and to civil rights. Um, they are progressive. They are trying to solve the, country, the problems of our country. They try to solve the issues that the poor deal with. But when it comes to African Americans, they remain silent. Um, in fact, Wilson actually it was from the South and, and actually blocked anti-lynching legislation. So the U.S. government was trying to pass laws that would make lynching illegal, and Wilson blocked that. So Wilson's allowing lynching to occur. Um, you know, pretty crazy and pretty insane. And then the progressive movement in general kind of ends with the start of World War I. It's hard to be making all these social reforms in your country when you're involved in this huge giant war. And that's really what marks the end of the progressive era because we move into now a wartime country. Uh, we're, we're, we're worrying, we are worrying about other countries uh, and not trying to fix the problems within our own country. All right, so that was um, Woodrow Wilson. Quick little rundown on that. Again, no questions this time. That was for review for our tests. Um, and so I uh, hope you all have a good day. Bye.